one of those stumble. I am. I see that shot going on tonight. I have no trouble imagining that. To you, June, to Jesse and Greg, other family members, relatives, friends, co-workers, on behalf of Father Michael, the rest of the parish family here at St. Clair's and myself, we offer you our truly deepest sympathy at Gil's death. While we can't possibly imagine what you're all going through to right now, uh, the emptiness that comes from losing someone who is such a good man, a loving husband and father, a man who was also a good teacher and a compassionate human being, while we cannot know the depth of your pain, I'm sure you know that Gil was a part of this family, and he will be greatly missed here, too. Over the years in ministry, I've had the experience of two people dying close to one another, and I let my mind imagine the two of them meeting in heaven. That's especially true if the two people are interesting to me. Yesterday morning, I learned that Maurice Sendak had died. Uh, most of us know him as the author of Where the Wild Things Are, and other books described as children's literature. Although Mr. Sendak once told an interviewer that he didn't write the books for children, he wrote them for adults. Uh, his stories, according to Sendak, were, they were pretty much based on one question from his childhood. Why do all the exciting things happen after the kids go to bed? <laughs> Haven't you wondered that? <laughs> the adventures the kids in his books have are all about his vivid imaginings which were turned loose in the kitchen, the jungle, and anywhere else that a kid's mind would naturally wonder. His characters were sometimes scary, always interesting and creative, and occasionally controversial. Uh, more than one of his books was censored or banned. I'm thinking that Gil and Maurice would have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I can just imagine them sitting there, these new arrivals, having a conversation in heaven. Maybe it's just my mind. Uh, during his all too short life, Gil Rosenberg certainly introduced some interesting characters to us and to one another. In the words of a one line summary about him that's posted on the internet, Gil was committed to networking, community, and communication to build a better world. How true those words are. Nowhere was this summary more evident than in the classes he taught. Gil always tried to teach at extended campuses so that he would be assured of having a small-sized class, and that way the students would get to know each other. A study of sociology makes infinitely more sense when it can be experienced. Gil believed that facilitating a significant change in the vision of a small number of people would have a greater and more far-reaching effect than little changes that might happen in a much larger group in the lecture hall. Some of the Facebook postings that came from his students over the last few days show that he was right. Uh, once his students got him, because he wasn't an Orthodox teacher, <laughs> Gil was able to open their minds and their hearts to a new way of thinking and living. But it wasn't just in the classes he taught at EKU, BCTC or the local county high school at Gil Shone. He worked to establish and improve communities and communications wherever he went. The child care community of Eastern Kentucky, with over 500 operations, desperately needed a voice and training and advocacy. Gil joined with June and Ellen to help those most vital services get noticed and funded. The immigrant community, who contribute so much to our welfare and our way of life, even some who play baseball for the legends, they needed an interpreter and guide through the mass of red tape in our crazy court system, which they had to maneuver daily. 
Gill was there for them. At BCTC, he worked to ensure the success of Latino students in their studies. Through his love of soccer, okay, actually, it was his obsession with soccer, <laughs> Gill got to know and build up an even more international community. The man loved to wear t-shirts. I don't think I ever saw him without one that I could read. And his great variety of t-shirts gave witness to his passion for the sport, the places where it was played, and the people who played the game. With all of that going on, Gil never lost sight of the community in which he and June lived and raised their children, and in which they developed such close and long-term friendships. So many of us here tonight from the college, from the parish, from all professions and states in life, Gil touched us in some special ways. It's doubtful that Mr. Kennedy's stage productions and the Gong Show will be quite as enjoyable without Gil's presence. And some of the conversations around dinner tables and holiday celebrations and potlucks will be less animated because of Gil's absence. Those who speak in any one of several languages will pause at the mention of Gil's name and wish they could ask him one more question or share some amazing story with him. And his friends hereabouts will wait for one of his drive-by phone calls just to see how they're doing, but they won't be coming. This and many other communities of people have suffered a great loss with Gil's death. A wise woman once said that community doubles our joy and divides our grief. Gil knew that truth, and he taught it to so many of us. And tonight as we experience the second half of that truth, we strengthen each other to go out and keep building our own communities grateful that we were somehow a part of his. A wise man once said, love is too strong a thing to only last for a short lifetime. Gil could never have built, taught, and been actively involved in so many communities in his short lifetime if he didn't know the value of love shared. And that is his legacy and the work that he leaves to us. Gil and Maurice Sendak both knew that the things that are common to all human beings are the foundation for each person's developing mutual respect for others, all the while claiming the creativity that is unique to each one of us. And that adds so much spice to our living together on this planet. Yes, I can imagine the two sages sitting side by side in heaven smiling down at us wild things, <laughs> knowing that we will try to keep up their good work, and we will smile back.